In this video, we're going to talk about categorical variables as well as graphing. First, let's just talk about, you know, graphing. Now, the good news is in this, these modern versions of Stata, you don't have to do a lot of coding. In fact, you probably don't even have to do any line of codes to actually, you know, make nice graphs. For example, you could just click on where it says graphics and you could sort of pick which uh, graph you want to make. For example, if you want to make a pie chart, uh, just of, you know, different races. And let's see, you could just pick the uh, race variable and uh, see what happens. Well, there you go. So it's sort of giving you the pie chart of the break up, breakdown in this sample of, you know, what percent were whites, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, etc. You can even click on graph editor to, you know, change around the labels and whatnot. There's all sorts of other options. In general, if you want to, you know, change colors, this and that, uh, if you just type in help, it'll give you the exact uh, commands for your version of Stata for how to edit uh, various options and stuff for that graph. So you could just do help uh, graph, and it's just going to give you all the different graph options, graph pi, for example, uh, and whatnot. So you could just do that. And again, no point in memorizing any of this, just because, uh, again, it's all available to easily manipulate it, uh, you know, once using the... Um, point and click options like this. So for example, if we want to do a histogram uh, of just, you know, math scores here, we could just do histogram, math, and uh, just see what happens. Bam, right? So it's giving us the distribution of all the math scores here. So it's like a, you know, decent visual for us. It takes, you know, less than a second to create. But yeah, so we could see some people, the y-axis here for, his, so histograms are usually used for continuous variables, not categorical variables unlike a pie chart which is used for something categorical like race so here yeah it's like it's ordered so it's a continuous quantitative variable and it's just giving you the y-axis giving you how common how frequent that observation was so it's sort of like you know you can see it's kind of normal it's not like exactly normal because it's sort of there's like a uh, it's not symmetric around this mean but yeah so that's that you can even do a uh, you know dot uh, scatter plot, for example, you could just do scatter with two continuous variables like your math score and your reading score. You scatter, math, read. You know, it's giving you a scatter plot. So really, for all these, and again, you can click on the graph editor there, and then you could take a screenshot or even save it as a PNG file. Uh, but yeah, so again, just browse around with this and, uh, you know, click on the help thing, and then you'll be able to graph virtually anything you want. Now to briefly talk about how to deal with categorical variables with more than two categories. Let's say you have a race variable and that the race could be one of four things. Let's say race is coded as one if you are white. Let's say it's two if you're black. Three if you're Hispanic. And four if you are Asian. So if this is your variable, well then, and if you want to do a regression, let's say you wanted to predict the wage uh, based on your race. Now if you were to just do like a wage equals intercept plus beta one race, huh, the problem is this, if you were to just make this, no matter what numbers you got here, the problem is how do you interpret this beta one? Well, technically the way you interpret this is every time this x variable goes up by one, your wage goes up by whatever this is. But what does it even mean for race to go up by one, right? As you go from white to black, but then as black to Hispanic, you know, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. And if we were to just reorder these, that would totally change it. But I mean, how we label this shouldn't philosophically change like the treatment effect, right? So, so how do you deal with this? And the answer is this. The answer is you essentially have to turn this into dummy variables. We're essentially going to have to have, if there's four categories, we're going to need to have three dummy variables. However many categories there are, that minus one is how many dummy variables you have to create. And so you have to just pick one of them, it doesn't matter which one, but you have to pick one of them to be the, the sort of baseline. So if we were to just pick white as the, the base uh, that we'll then compare the others from, then we're just going to not have a variable for white. So remember how I said you're going to need uh, however many categories there are minus one. So if there's four categories, we need three dummy variables, and so the three dummy variables could just be black, Hispanic, and Asian. So let's just say black 
that variable, let's say that's x1, and so black, it, so that's just going to be literally 0 if you are not black, and it's going to be 1 if you are black. For now, I'm ignoring you know, the possibility of mixed race uh, individuals. So you're basically either in one of these four categories. And so if you are, uh, you know, again, if you're black, your value for this variable is going to be 1. If you're not, it's 0. Similarly, we could just say x, x2 is Hispanic, same thing. Um, and x3 is Asian, same thing, 0 or 1. So again, either both are just like 0 or 1, if you're that race or not. So, all right, so if we have this, now, what does our regression mean? If we were to now make a regression with wage equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3, how do we now interpret these betas? Well, let's think about it. If I were to, so the best way to really understand what these beta means is to first ask yourself this. If you wanted to predict the wage of a white individual, what would their wage be? Now, just to just to specifically, you know, put these, uh, you know, uh, make this more concrete. Let's just say that you did this regression, and these numbers ended up being wage equals twenty-five minus three x one plus one x two plus 2x3, something like that, right? Just making these numbers up. So if these are the numbers, what does this mean? How do you interpret this regression? Well, so like I said, first just ask yourself to predict the wage of a white person. Well, if you're white, your value for the variable x2, so normally notice to predict, to use a regression to predict, you plug in the x values for that person, right? If these were like years of schooling and gender and uh, you know, occupation or something, you just plug in that person's, you know, how many years of schooling did you go to, you know, and whatnot. So here you're just plugging in similarly their, vari their value for these variables. So if you're white, your value for x1, which is just an indicator for whether you're black, is just going to be zero. So your, your, your value that you're going to plug into this equation is zero for x1. Similarly, you're not Asian or Hispanic either, so these two are zero as well. So when you plug in zero, for all the x's, 0 times 3 is 0, uh, so that term drops. Similarly, uh, this term drops, and this term drops because it's you're multiplying these coefficients by 0, which is their value for that person. So th this whole thing drops, and so your predicted wage is just this first number here, your coefficient, your uh, you know constant here. So what this means is that the average uh, wage for a white person is 25. Okay, well now if I were to say predict the wage of a black person, well then let's similarly just, you know, plug in their value for these three variables. If you're black, then your value for this x1 is literally the number 1, uh, so you're just going to replace x1 with the number 1. So this is going to be 1. Similarly, x2, well if you're black, you're, and you know, according to this, you're not Hispanic, so this is 0, and you're not Asian, so this is 0. So essentially, when you plug those in, uh, let's see what you get. You basically get 25 minus 3 times 1, but then plus this is like 1 times 0, and then 2 times 0. So these terms drop, and so really it's just like 25 minus 3, which is 22. So if you think about it, this, this first 25, that was you know, uh, the white person's average salary. And then if you're black, then your average salary, the only thing that happened was this negative 3 got sort of turned on. So you could think of these variables, these dummy variables, as turning this effect on or off. So this beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3, the way to interpret them is it's the difference in salary between this, that particular race and whites. Because that was the group that we omitted, right? If we would have omitted blacks, then all these interpretations would be the difference between that race and black. So here, because we omitted white, all these are just saying, all right, uh, you know, so yeah, let's just for practice again, so if you're Hispanic, then your value for x2 is 1, but the others are 0, so then it's going to be, I'm oh, sorry, it's going to be, let's see, if you're Hispanic, then this is 25, but then this is 0, so that drops, but then this is 1, 
So it's like plus, I guess, 1 times 1 is 1. And this is 0 as well, right? So then your average salary is 26. So it's $1 above the whites. And so essentially the way to then now in retrospect interpret all this is this. It's that on average, this, this beta 1 is the difference in salary between whites and blacks. This beta 2, this 1, that's the difference in salaries between Hispanics and blacks. And this beta 3 is the difference in salary between uh, Asians and whites. And so, so and this is Hispanics and whites. So they're all like with whites. So whites and Hispanics, Asians and uh, 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 whites, and then blacks and whites. So that's just the uh, interpretations for these coefficients. Let's do a quick example of this in Stata. So here in this star data set, we have race. Let's just take a look at this race variable. We could do uh, code book race, for example. All right, so it's giving us these categories. And so if we wanted to, so again, let's, if we want, we could just label white as the baseline race and then black, Asian, Hispanic, you know, so we could, we could choose to do as many of these as we want. So here I'm just going to create a new do file and just show you the type of code that will help us do this. So again, just let's say our main outcome variable is math score. We want to look at if there's a math score difference between the different races. And so if we were to just do reg math race, that's not going to be useful because again, the interpretation here is as race goes up by one, your math average score goes up by, it goes down by 15. Uh, but again, this like the ordering here, <laughs> you know, is is not it should not be is not something that's innate, and so it doesn't really make sense to interpret it this way. So instead, we want to again turn this into dummy variables. So let's just focus on these first four categories. There's only a few observations for the other ones, but yeah. So let's focus on these first four categories. So uh, we want to create three new variables. Let's just again call them Black, Asian, and Hispanic, and so. Uh, here's how we're the code to create them is this so black I notice that in the race variable uh, black is two so we're gonna say gen we're gonna create a new variable generate gen black equals one so black's gonna equal one if uh, race is two right so if race equals equals two so notice the if it you know you have to put the double equals but you know so so that and then once we do that, though, so this is going to create, so let's see what happens when we do that line of code. So that line of code, it's going to create this variable black. So notice if your race is, you, you know, here, if your race is two, like black, then that value is one. But notice the other ones are missing. We don't want them to be missing. We want them to be zero. So we could just say, well, replace black with the number zero instead of missing if race is just literally not two. So not equals two. This exclamation point means not that thing. So not equals two. So if race is not equal to two, meaning any other race, then you're going to replace black instead of missing like it is right now with zero. So let's execute that one. All right, now let's see what happens. Yeah, so now black is, yeah, zeros and ones, indicators. All right, well, so now let's just sort of copy so this, usually this two, two sentences sort of creates that. So gen, so now let's create another variable. Uh, let's see, Asian. So that's Asian is race equaling three, right? So generate Asian is one if race is three, and Asian is zero if race is anything other than three, right? So this Asian variable is just gonna give you a zero or a one. One if you are Asian, meaning if your race is three, and zero if you're not Asian, meaning if your race is not three. And while we're here, might as well do it for Hispanic as well. Hispanic, Hispanic, if race is four and four. All right, so let's just run these two. All right, let's just take a quick look. Yeah, so now we have these, these dummy variables. We have a black zeros and ones, Asian zeros and ones, Hispanic zeros and ones. All right, now let's do our regression. So reg. Uh, and then reg math, and then just the different x variables for the different races. So black, Asian, Hispanic. All right. And uh, let's see. So the interpretation here is that on average, black students scored 17 points below whites. On average, Asian students scored 0.73 below whites. 
And if we look at the p-value, though, that's not significant. So this, this was close enough to zero is what this means. And you can't really say that there's a difference between whites and Asians. For Hispanics, the average ne negative 15. But notice that was, the p-value was pretty high there as well. Uh, and so what that means is you can't generalize there as well. Probably because there were, if you look at the sample sizes, I think there was only, you know, five Hispanic students in our sample. And so even though those five students on average were 15 points below whites, we can't, you know, the p-value is still high enough where we can't be sure that, you know, the there's a difference even. Zero might be the true difference between Hispanics and whites. But yeah, so that is how you would do a regression when you have a categorical variable with more than two categories.